Hi, thank you for joining us for today's morning song. I'm Darcy Holdorf. I'm the programs director here at the John C. Campbell Folk School in Brasstown, North Carolina. For those of you who aren't familiar with our morning song, morning song is a Danish tradition of starting the day with music, stories, and song. It's still practiced in Denmark and across the globe at many folk schools, such as here at the John C. Campbell Folk School. So today we are honored to present you with Felipe Perez. He's a master accordion player who has been playing and performing for more than 70 years, since a very young age. And it's been really fun to have Felipe here and to learn more about conjunto, which is a really unique style of uh, Texas Mexican social dance music. Um, so Felipe plays many of the older songs, many songs that have almost disappeared. So it's a real privilege to have you here Thank you. and enjoy. So I'm going to say that same thing in Spanish for some of our newer audience members. Um, Bienvenidos a nuestra presentación de Morning Song. Me llamo Darcy Holdor, y soy la directora de programas aquí en John C. Campbell Folk School, que es una escuela de arte y cultura folclórica en las montañas del oeste de norte de Carolina. Eh, para los que no sepan qué es Morning Song, Morning Song es una tradición danesa de comenzar el día juntos con música y cuentos. Y esa tradición se practica todavía en muchos países y en muchas escuelas de cultura folclórica como aquí en Brasshaven. Y es un honor tener hoy aquí Felipe Pérez, un maestro del acordeón que ha tocado y presentado conjunto y otros estilos de música desde el año 1950, cuando tenía 10 años. Ha sido un placer tener a Felipe aquí en Brasstown para aprender un poco más sobre conjunto, un estilo de música que es únicamente estadounidense y creado en Texas. Así que bienvenidos a todos. Gracias. Sí. Thank you. Yeah, very much. Yeah. <coughs> I'm going to uh, start with a mazurka song that I learned from Pedro Ayala, an old musician from Mexico, and uh, it, it's, it dances more or less like a, a, a slow waltz, and it's uh, very interesting. Yeah. Next, I believe we'll introduce a, a polka that name, uh, was named back in the 50s. That was just a, oh, around 12 or 13 years, and I learned it from this old man. He's passed away already, a, a, a accordion pioneer from Corpus Christi, Texas. His name was Juan Lopez, and the polka's name is Felicita. It has to do with something feliz, happy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Teresita Polka. That Polka I learned it, uh, when I used to go and uh, visit the cantinas, that's what we call it. Uh, a bear place where they would dance and uh, the dancer were ladies that would go over there and to make money. They charged in those days about between 15 and 20 cents per, per dance. And the man would go there and, and, and call up for the woman and they would pay 20 cents. And he went up, later on they got a raise, <laughs> it's 25 cents a, a song. And uh, uh, the ladies made money. And uh, the, the, the guys didn't have to go out to the dance hall where they charge more money. But they enjoyed themselves. They could dance more loose and whatever. And uh, you, you would be surprised the, the steps that they, they would they make with the movements and all that, you know, very peppy with that ability of moving their legs and dancing. So it was a challenge for the lady because they had to dance with different, different dancers, you know, men. So they had to adapt to, to the, his uh, style and the ways of uh, moving. So it was real interesting and I would go when I was about 12 or 13 years old and, and look through the windows and so therefore I picked up that, lots of that old music. And that Mr. Juan Lopez, uh, he, he was one of my mentors, you know. I would always consult him on some pieces of some songs and he had lots of patience to, to teach me. But uh, I had to do a lot of practicing in my house at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning I would make noise with my accordion. And uh, the other piece, uh, you want to say something? You want to say something? John? What is it? You want to say something? I'll, uh, I'll just say hello to everybody and, and uh, thanks for having us and it's a real treat to, to be here. I came down from Nashville today to, to uh, play uh, weekends worth of shows with our, our good friend Felipe and uh, uh, we're glad you all uh, are tuned in and, and thanks to uh, all the folks here at the John C. Campbell Folk School for, for having us out to play and, and I hope you enjoy this music. It's a rare opportunity. I work as a folklorist at the Center for Popular Music in, uh, uh, at MTSU. Work as a, a run a record label over there <coughs> to uh, archiving work with traditional music and uh, and Felipe is a really rare and special, uh, he's one of the best living traditional uh, musicians in, in America today. I have no hesitation saying that. It's a real rare and special opportunity to, to hear him play and even better to get an opportunity to play a couple tunes with him and, and uh, uh, hope, uh, hope we do the music justice. You're doing a great job and we're, uh, we'll do our best to, to make you sound good. Thank you. And I'm real proud and, uh, that uh, they gave me the opportunity to make a recording ah, with mm -hmm. that uh, label. What was the name of the label? I forget. Yeah, the, uh, we have a little record label at the CPM, it's called Springfed Records, mm -hmm. and, and a couple years ago we made a, a really excellent recording with uh, with Felipe. So mm -hmm. we're at uh, SpringfedRecords.com if you want to find out about mm -hmm. that. We have a Facebook page, and and uh, that's uh, you can buy our records there. And of course we're on all the standard streaming uh, uh, networks, and and uh, that's where you can listen to fully pays recordings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play uh, one of the recordings that I record. It was at the uh, recording label. It's called La Mosquita Muerta. It's a uh, dead, dead uh, uh, mosquito. <laughs> There's a little story behind it, but I'll wait and, and tell it a little later. And after that I have another one on mine that we recorded. It's named uh, El Tio Siringue. <laughs> El Tio Siringue. He, he was my uncle. He passed away while he was in prison. And, and uh, so uh, this is the way the Mosquita Muerta goes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mosquita Muerta is kind of a difficult uh, mazurka, that is a mazurka, you know, on the finger moving and all that. <laughs> Sometimes you make a little boo-boo, but you continue, it's okay. <laughs> that's uh, acceptable. <laughs> mistakes don't bother the dead mosquitoes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he said the, the mistakes don't bother the dead mosquitoes. <laughs> so, uh, you want to say something? Like, uh, for instance, what? Uh, well, Felipe, uh, it was uh, inducted into the Cajunto Hall of Fame uh, back in uh, a couple years ago at the big Cajunto Festival that held at the Guadalupe Culture Arts Center in San Antonio. And uh, he's, he's actually a legend in Corpus Christi, where he's from and where he played for a long time. And even people who uh, nowadays we think of as old timers who are in their 70s, they say, well, when we were kids, we'd go listen to Felipe play, including the great bajista Robert Sanchez, he, he used to go watch Felipe, and Rabbit's now, I think he's about 75, but he thinks of Felipe as kind of an elder, which gives you an idea of mm -hmm. how young Felipe started and, uh, and what an influence he's had. So uh, he's really, uh, you know, not just, there's a lot of people who play accordion in Texas, and there's a lot of players, but, but Felipe is, is, is holder of a really rare tradition. Oh, and I should say something about this, because it looks like a guitar, but what it is is called the bajo sexto. It's a, uh, uniquely borderlands kind of instrument. No one really knows its origin. It's sort of an interesting thing that uh, historians uh, uh, wrestle with, but it has a variety of uh, theories where it comes from, but nobody knows for sure. And this was made in San Antonio by the family that essentially perfected the instrument, the Macias family. This was made by Alberto Macias, who was the grandson or the son of Martin Macias, who basically invented it. So these are the instruments that are made. They're handmade. You know, this was made out of a magnolia tree from that Albert planted, I think, in 1937. His father planted it because of dates inside, and then he built it for a friend of mine in 1984. So wow. that's where this mm -hmm. comes from, and uh, and the strings are handmade by a guy who's a, a uh, these I buy them from a guy who's a, named T.J. Berver. You can look him up. He's a he's a rancher, and he just, just he plays bajo, and and these guys they just make the strings because you can't get the right gauges except the old school way, one at a time made by hand. So it's tuned all in fourths, uh, an octave lower than a guitar. Um, and it's the instrument that's played. Oh yeah, one more thing about Felipe's playing. It's uh, many years ago in the 30s, most accordion players stopped playing the bass buttons on the accordion because the bajo was playing the bass and then they brought him the bass. But Felipe still plays with his left hand. And actually the young guys, the flashy players, they often actually take the bass accordion yeah. reeds mm -hmm. out to make the box lighter and to make more air buttons. So, very old school, not just sound, but style of playing, and uh, and really unique. And and if you uh, want to learn it from Felipe, he can teach it to you right here online from the mm -hmm. comfort of your own home, you know, or something. So get, yeah, when get I first at the folk school or, or with Felipe, look him up. And, when I first started back in the 50s, uh, uh, the first polka that I learned, you know, around the neighborhood, they would come over to me. Hey, would you like to play in my graduation and uh, from my daughter's graduation, a little party or whatever. So I did by myself. I had a little two-button ro roll accordion, a smaller, and uh, that I I paid uh, forty-four dollars for it. How did I earn that money? I was only uh, ten and maybe nine. I would go out to to the traffic, to the cantinas where all the people would hang around, to the bus depots, and uh, and I would take my little shoe shoe box, shoe sharing box. My mother would put a uh, whole bunch of tacos of refried beans in it. <laughs> I was a good eater. And she, 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 would, she would give me a nickel just for one Coke to start your day. Don't, uh, so you'll have, you won't be hungry eating it. So 
I, that's how I started. And every every penny I would make, sometimes fifty cents, sixty or a dollar, I would give it to her. So after the time goes by, uh, she she gather enough money to go and put on that way this little accordion. And the name of the shop was Horn Shop Music Store in Corpus Christi. And that was in 19, the later part of 1949. And uh, so he takes, she takes me over there when I came from elementary school. She tells me, don't take off your tennis, we're going to make an errand. So we did, and she, she surprised me with that accordion. Like, man, I got it. <laughs> I don't know how my face looked, you know, very impressed and happy. And, so I started, I stayed there till about two, three in the morning, or maybe later, you know. And uh, and then people would go by there at 12 midnight and they would hear me banging at that accordion. And, and I finally learned it, little, a few limited songs, and they would hire me, you know, by myself. And I would, I had to learn it from my bajo, you know. And uh, so I was very limited, of course, just a kid. But uh, ever since. Remember the first polka you played? Yeah, Chuy Baja. <laughs> Play? Yeah. What key do you have? E. E. E or E flat? E. E. Right there. No, no, no. I think uh, C. Do you play C? C? Oh, yeah, C. 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 Yeah. C. 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 Yeah. And this is the first book I learned, and it's pretty complicated, but I, I got the the, the, the uh, bull from the horn and I got it. <laughs> And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why, because yeah. there it goes up. <laughs> and I added a little funny uh, step there, and all the way up, sui baja, up and down. <laughs> yes, uh, I had a hard time, and that's probably not still playing it the way the, the authentic uh, musician, we, I guess it was uh, Narciso Martinez or Pedro Ayala, one of those two old timers back in the 20s and 30s. But that's the kind of music I, I, I learn in the polkas, old polkas. And like right now I have a, a polka that I, I compose. Uh, we haven't played it, El Siringue. Yeah, El Siringue. That's, uh, I compose that in honor of my uh, uh, uncle. I didn't even get to know that guy. He passed away while he was in prison. But 
His, his story is pretty sad. He died there after uh, killing a, a person in Corpus Christi. He was high temper, so you don't want to get in front of him. <laughs> and uh, so that's that's uh, the story on this little polka that I'm going to play. That it's called El Siringue, El Tio Siringue. <laughs> like uh, the Danish, huh? <laughs> uh, yes, sir, just about all of my repertorio, how do you say in English? Repertoire. Repertoire, yeah. Uh, I have a, a, a custom of uh, inspiring or, or uh, preparing a, a song with uh, different variety of uh, sounds, you know. It, it'll give you the impression that uh, it, it comes from Europe, you know. As a matter of fact, I compose a, a mazurka that I named it after my uh, uh, younger child, Shulamite, and I named it Sulamita Redova. Oh, it's a mazurka, really. And uh, I'm gonna play that before I forget it. But uh, that has, uh, the second part has uh, that European German style, you know. And I've never been in Europe. <laughs> but I hear lots of uh, uh, a variety of music from, from uh, on YouTube, you know. And I like the accordion players from Argentina. And even from Europe, you know, they have 120 uh, basses. Man, them guys are awesome, you know. They can really move their left finger. Sometimes they even we come out with a whole melody, the left, uh, left fingers in it. Now I'm just there. <laughs> but uh, this uh, Sulamita Masuka, let's see. <laughs> Thank you. 
a little taste of uh, European huh? <laughs> the melody. Uh. And when I, when I first uh, it came to my mind, you know, because I hardly use the, the according to practice. I've heard lots of other musicians that they practice eight hours, six hours a day. I, I, I'm sorry, it's not in my blood. Uh, that when I started, yeah, but not anymore. I mean, I, when I get the, the accordion in, because during the night, my fingers are like that, and my mind is working like crazy like a computer. <laughs> And I compose uh, songs during my sleeping, you know. I, I, I dream them, and then when I get up, uh, I get the accordion. Yep, and the first thing I do, I, rec I record it so I won't forget it. And once I record it, that's it. There's another one on the list, yeah. But that's the only time that I hardly use it, get the accordion to, to practice a little. Because yeah. uh, uh, I enjoy it. That's a very satisfaction for me, very satisfying. and, and uh, to inspire music, you know. Will you, right. you play the coronavirus polka? Speaking of oh yeah, of speaking of that, I, I he he's, he uh, asked for a a coronavirus polka, and I, I got it. <laughs> he oh, I need to to, to uh, play it also. He asked me he composed me a a, a redova on, on my name, and I did. It's called dance redova. <laughs> and then another one, Greg said, well, now you're going to have to compose me a wapango. And I composed him a wapango, and I gave him five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. So you thanks to God. Shottish for John. Uh, yeah, he's next. Nice. Shottish. <laughs> but uh, I do not attribute anything superior in me. I attribute it to the Almighty. He's the creator. He created us even, and you could do the same thing. You could do it. I've seen ladies play the accordion like crazy. <laughs> I stay with my uh, mouth open. Ah, oh, what? <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, any human being, you know, you get they get to it. And, and this is the coronavirus polka. <laughs> Can I say something right here to finalize? I'm uh, very uh, happy that I had this privilege all the way to uh, North Carolina and out by the mountains. I only see this on the Western movies, the mountains and all that. Eh? And I admire very much his creation. But uh, also I want to give thanks to John that made all the effort to come from Nashville. John Fabe. Fabke? Yep. Fabke, yeah. Yeah, he's a professional. Uh, musician, he plays several uh, instruments like the tololoche, the electric bass, the guitar, and what else? The banjo? Huh? I play a little banjo. A little banjo. And, and then the he, accordion, he plays accordion. Oh, he's playing, yeah, he's learned about 20 songs already, so he'll pick it up pretty soon. He's going to get Felipe, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and next is uh, my mentor here and my manager. You want to say something? Dan? Oh, my name is Dan Margulies, and I'm just happy to get to pal along with Felipe wherever he goes, and honored to have him here in North Carolina where I live, and I'm glad to get the people here to get to hear Felipe's music. So. But uh, look him up online. Felipe's on Facebook. He's very adept at that. YouTube. And, get, and YouTube. We put a lot of his stuff on YouTube, so get in touch. And, uh, and of course, he's always available for gigs anywhere a plane can go. <laughs> mm -hmm.
And uh, thank you.